Hello there, I'm Paul Ray from the official Teen Wolf Wiki, and today I'm counting down the strongest characters on the... What is... What, what is this happy crappy? I said I'm not doing this kind of thing because I don't care about strongest characters and stuff like that. Well, I'd like to see you try to do the video without me. Hello there. What, what's that? Hello there. What Hello. are you doing? Hello there. Oh there. Hello there. I'm Paul Ray from the official Teen Wolf Wiki and today I'm counting down the strongest characters from the show. Okay, because okay, I'm a dis okay, first kind okay, of guy fine. I'm Turn off the ones. AI yeah. voice. I'll do the stupid strongest list. Fine. If you like it when I talk about Teen Wolf, go ahead and take the leap. Subscribe to the channel and join me on my weekly journeys back to Beacon Hill. Okay, stupidest char- I mean, the strongest characters on Teen Wolf. At number one, we've got the Beast of Gévaudan. You don't have to take my word for it. Jeff Davis has declared Sebastian Valet's Beast the strongest. In terms of power. Huh. Oh, that's hard. <laughs> I'd say the Beast is- the Beast is probably our most powerful werewolf but he doesn't use the power intelligently. And it was that lack of intelligence that got him skewered and killed by a sharp stick, not once, but twice. Okay, if Sebastian is the strongest, in my mind, that makes Jordan Parrish the next strongest, because he literally held Sebastian to a standstill in their big confrontation in the tunnel. In fact, this moment only ended when Parrish got distracted by Lydia's scream. Our resident hellhound is also one of the strongest because he's got more tricks, like setting opponents on fire and burning through stuff like mountain ash and cannabis venom. I would venture that he could be the strongest if he and the hellhound spirit were more in sync. One always seems to be undermining or distracting the other. That whole interaction with the Ghost Riders and then his thing with Douglas, that stuff really leaves him vulnerable overall. Speaking of Douglas, he does not make this list. I know a lot of people want to think he's some kind of super strong werewolf because he's got that little lion thing going on, but I mean, seriously? <coughs> Beyond the fact that he couldn't breathe without help, the one Ghost Rider he managed to lasso was already in a cage. I will give him one point of extra strength though. He had a powerful set of jaws that could bite through skulls. Beyond the chomp chomp bitey bits, he didn't really show much more strength than average in most interactions and showed less strength than others overall. So again, the coffee bitey Nazi lower mensch is not on this list. I'll throw in season one Peter here. When he was completely insane and out of control, he was also at his peak physical strength. Again, this level of werewolf strength comes with a healthy dose of stupidity, which is why he was taken down by a bunch of skinny teenagers with some flammable liquid. But he was strong there for a little while. See now, this next one is the primary reason why I think a list of physical strength is dumb. The dreads both should and should not be on this list. I mean, we saw the doctors overpower all the werewolves, except the one they created. But they're not physically strong at all. The tech was doing all the work. 
And when that stuff was working right, they could literally stop anyone with a magnetic field generator. But is that really strength? Because when you strip away the special mask and other gadgets, you end up with squishy old humans, which is why this whole strongest character list is an exercise in futility. I mean, come on, what are you guys Continuing now with the countdown of Teen Wolf's strongest characters, we come to the combined form of the All Far Twins. Or we saw Voltron Wolf fight pretty well. His best claim to strength came before we met him. He reportedly killed an entire pack of badass by care werewolves in their old far. We took down the whole pack, one by one. And by the time we got to where Alpha, he was begging for his life. And we tore him apart. Literally. Yes, I get it. Stick to the list and limit my editorial thoughts. Okay, where are we up to? Voltron Wolf? Okay, but you've got to say he's actually tied with Deucalion, isn't he? I mean, Jennifer killed Voltron Wolf pretty easily, but that was all circumstantial because she was able to get leverage to break his neck. Deucalion, on the other hand, withstood a direct telekinetic blast from her without even flinching. But then Ennis should come in here too, because he was as strong as Deucalion until he got all messed up in that big mall fight. The one that Deucalion just stood around and watched. And then Deucalion caught him in a severely weakened state. Are we serious with this kid? Uh, yeah, just throw Kali in there for good measure. All the Alpha Pack members are stronger than average, okay? Speaking of werewolves with an edge, Derek at the end of season four was at peak werewolf strength. That whole reverse aging death thing really got him in touch with his werewolf side. And when he came back, he was able to fully control his body. Not only turn into a real wolf, he was able to tap every ounce of his potential werewolf strength. I guess I should throw a berserker in here. They're dumb muscle, but they are muscle. Derek ripped that one's head off, but otherwise it took a bomb to take one down. Catch. Scott at the end of season four was also at his peak physical strength. This was after he lost control and almost killed the hunter in the warehouse, but before he got all emotionally wrecked because of Theo in season five. That whole werewolf strength and healing being tied directly to your emotional state is a serious weakness. But I guess it's necessary. I mean, you don't want your lead character to get all overpowered and boring. Okay, uh, Ghost Riders. Yeah, sure, they're pretty strong too, but their real strength comes from how many of them there are. I mean, if you have an endless supply of recyclable demon cowboys to throw at a situation, you're eventually gonna win. Kanima was strong. Dumb as a box of rocks and restrained by its master's weaknesses, but really strong. I think Jackson has that potential too, but other than a couple of scenes right at the end, we really didn't see enough to say for sure, but he sh probably should be on the list. Malia lifted a tree that one time and went toe to toe with an experienced assassin who also happened to be her mom. So can I stop now? Oh, thank God. And thanks for watching. Commenting and liking the video will go a long way toward increasing the number of people who see it. And it will potentially increase the number of people who agree that I'm wrong about everything. So like and comment. I'll see you next time we go back to Beacon Hills.